Hello, we are the Istanbul Technical University team, partner of the Palimpses Cities project. In this video, we will be sharing with you an online guide and a tutorial on how we will work with models in this module of the Palimpses Cities course. Model making is a common practice for architecture students and for architects. It's also a fun and engaging learning tool for everyone who would like to think with their hands and explore the potentials of learning by doing in more than two dimensions. Additionally, in our case, we will have a tool for the learning and understanding of a multi-layered city. So let's begin. Models have existed throughout the history of human civilization in many, many different forms, like gifts and tombs, dedications in religious and political contexts, in paintings and sculptures. In history, architects made use of models to impress their clients, who were kings, popes or sultans. Today, a model has become a common tool for many creative practices, including architecture, and it can be produced in a wide range of conventional or experimental materials, and of course, in advanced virtual technologies. Model is a representation tool. The word representation is a combination of two things. To present, as in presenting an entity's knowledge, its form, scale, components, relationships, etc. And re is in repetition or reproduction, referring to the interpretation of that knowledge by analyzing, investigating, and understanding. The combination of these two makes the model a very rich learning, thinking, and design tool, which we want to benefit in this course. We use models to think with our hands. We test ideas, decipher complex formations, develop new concepts, realities, explore and express possibilities. With models, we can investigate situations, communicate our intentions, detail them, and understand multiple contexts by working in a range of scales. So what is our expectation from model making in the context of Palimpsest Cities course? We can benefit from models at least in two ways. One, in enhancing the learning experience in the course, and two, in, or in the organization of the curriculum. In terms of the learning experience, models can help us better understand the context, the relationships, and the layers of architectural history and cultural heritage in multiple dimensions. It creates a hands-on engagement with the study object, triggers learning by doing, and it helps us analyze the study area in various scales of materials. The logic of model making enforces the creative interpretation of layeredness. Students will use models to think the physical and non-physical layers, the historic evolutions, continuities and discontinuities in the study area. Also, model making can engage individuals in co-production, sharing and discussion, as well as collaboration. In terms of the benefits for the curriculum, models can be used to integrate different modules of the curriculum in the, in the Palimpsest course. They can be integrated with the field trips, uh, can be used for creating content for the time travel app, can be used as a custom-made visual background for digital storytelling. It can even be produced for the city on trial procedures as an evidence. In addition to that, students can create their original authentic content for their productions in this course, instead of relying on ready-made images and materials. Model making is a very wide and creative topic. However, we would like to give you some themes and tools as, a qu as quick tips on how to work with models in the context of this course. Different scales of models have their own level of detailing, expression and context, therefore provide different opportunities as well as limitations. It's important to choose the right scale of study uh, for a building, area, environment or object that fits the intention of that exploration. It's also essential to work with between different scales of models and switch between them in the process interchangeably. The framing of a model is a deliberate choice in deciding what the context of the study object will be. Scaling and framing also determines the real life size of the model, which has practical implications on things like how it will be carried around, how much material will be used, or how many people can work on it simultaneously. All kinds of materials can be used to make models, including scraps or leftover materials. It's important to test and explore the potentials of each material in terms of its expression, structural capacity, practicality or fitness for the intended study. Digital models also provide a wide range of immaterial characters, opportunities and limitations to be explored. Detailing and structuring should fit the intentions for that model. One can choose to work without glue, make the pieces detachable for a game-like model. A quick fold can allow to explore different forms in the shortest time. Or, for example, for an enduring exhibition model, uh, firm joints should be studied and tested in advance uh, to make it uh, as endurant as possible. The expression of a model depends on multiple parameters. Even with the exact same material, dramatically different sceneries and narratives can be built. One can ask, what is the most important element in this particular story of the model? 
and therefore what can be eliminated or left out. Every model is essentially a degree of abstraction of a built or imagined reality. Abstraction refers to taking away some characteristics and reducing it to a set of essential ones that we would like to focus on and work with. Our models can be designed in multiple ways to allow looking in them. They can also be designed in layers. These layers might be fixed or interchangeable. It's always possible to add additional layers of text, drawing, images, or even QR codes to increase the level of information attached to them. They can be produced as games. Such models give the users a chance to speculate, brainstorm, discuss, and even roleplay. Models can be designed individually or as a teamwork. It's also possible to organize a production process like a puzzle where individually produced parts come together to form a consistent whole. By using hybrid representation techniques, such as photo editing, collages, drawing, light and shadow plays, models can be manipulated for post-production and be used for other visual documents that will be produced in this course. These post-productions could also include moving images and films to include the dynamic layers of time, movement and actors in the narration of the study. Wow, this was exciting. In our Panimsa Cities course, we will try to bring together the creative production process of a model with the research on the rich history of our city. And it will never be the same. There's a different tutor, each time a different student, a different topic, and everything will change the outcome of the product. But they will all contribute to a more creative way of engaging with architectural history.